morning, everybody. How y'all doing? Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker, and I am your host. And today we're going to talk about um, non-traditional marriage. Because what we have to understand is that um, everybody's marriage is not going to look the same. Okay? And um, I want to talk about this because the last night, so I'm going to just give you the kind of like the little backstory. Because I was able to actually talk to Kendall Fowler last night. And I was able to um, get an interview with him last night on Clubhouse. And it went very well. They even put me in the hot seat and asked me some questions. It went pretty good last night. But um, let me give you a, the backstory. Okay, so I have, I'm here in Baton Rouge, so I am very aware of this particular couple. They are entrepreneurs. I'm going to leave it at that. About two weeks ago, I shared a video that he posted about women doing certain challenges on the internet, but not necessarily bringing that same energy home. I shared that video. And then last night I was DM'd a video of him from an OnlyFans page, which was his OnlyFans page that he confirmed last night. And it was pretty explicit. So last night I said, I have questions. I have questions because a few weeks ago, I did share a video about, and I wholeheartedly agreed with what he was saying with his video from a few weeks ago. Um, basically, if you're going to do all of these challenges on the internet, make sure you're taking care of the home front. In other words, if you go on post up your lingerie and all of this kind of stuff, you need to have that same energy at home and in your bedroom as well if you're in a relationship or marriage. Okay. So, of course, you know, everybody in the group last night was like, I want to see the video. I want to see the video. I want to see the video. Um, and the video started, baby, that video is being shared like snacks. Baby, that video was like a bag of potato chips and everybody just wanted to get a taste to see what the hype was about. Okay. He reached out um, on Instagram and told me that he was going to be on Clubhouse and he was willing to talk about it. So let's talk about the facts because um, somebody in the group actually gave a message and I don't know. And the thing is, when I'm relaying information... I, I let you know how I got it. It was a message. I never talked to his wife. It was a message that somebody said, his wife said, all I had to do was contact her and ask her. Okay, but let me just say this here. When something is trending, a lot of times I'm not contacting anybody because it's something that's trending. And that means that it's being talked about across the board on all platforms no one just pre-selected a particular couple to talk about. It's just that this is what everybody is talking about. And it just so happened to make it to the group. And it's a discussion at this point. But Mrs. Cloud, whenever you are ready to reach out and give your side of the story, we are all ears. If somebody want to add Mrs. Cloud to the group, if she wants to become a part of this conversation, please add Ms. Cloud to the group. Because I talked to her husband last night. And he gave his side, and that's the only side that I have. So, these are the facts. Mr. Cloud has had his own fans for about eight months. He just never did anything with it. Another fact, Mr. Cloud is married, but he is single. I'm quoting him, okay? Another fact, every video in his only fans that has a woman in the video, that woman is his wife. These are all, this is what he confirmed last night. Another fact. He been popular. <laughs> this is his words. Um, another fact is he basically said that he wants his wife to do additional videos. However, do not be surprised if you see a new person in the video. 
So that is that. I got all the tea that I could get that came from him. Um, oh, and be on the lookout for new videos because his subscribe his um his numbers are jumping. He's getting new subscri new subscribers daily. Um, and new content is on the way. He did want, to, want me to make sure that I told y'all new content is on the way. All right. Um, non-traditional marriage. We all have this certain idea of what marriage looks like. Okay. One question that I did ask him was, was he in an open marriage? And he said, no, he didn't really consider it to be an open marriage. So I'm just going to say this. All marriages don't look alike. And today I'm going to talk about non-traditional marriages. Most times traditional marriages between a man and a woman, a lot of times it's a lot of privacy. Um, a lot of times it just looks a certain way. It's very conservative. But we are in 2021 and a lot of people have what's considered to be non-traditional marriages. My husband and I, we have a traditional marriage. However, we allow each other the freedoms to be able to express ourselves however we want to express ourselves with the understanding that we're coming home to each other. That's the way it is. In other words, we could go into a setting. We could go into a club. We could go into any environment. We can mingle and talk with other people. If we're at a strip show, we're going to do what people do at a strip show, which is enjoy ourselves. But at the end of the night, we understand that we are coming home with each other. That's the dynamics of our marriage. Last night, when they interviewed me, they asked me, have we ever done a threesome? I can honestly say we have never done a threesome. They asked me, do I have an open marriage? No, I do not have an open marriage. But this is the thing about me. I can appreciate marriage on any level. Whether it's open, whether it's traditional, whether it's same sex, whether whatever it is, I can appreciate marriage on any level because certain principles are the same. And the biggest thing that we have to understand when we're dealing with marriage is what a couple has agreed on. See, the thing is, everybody see the clouds and they both have their only fans and they both have their social medias. But the thing is, there is power in agreement. Now, I don't go off of the he say, she say, because my inbox is flooded with the story, you know, with, with all of the stories. But it ain't on me to repeat the stories because I don't know it to be fact. Okay? But what I do know is we can't tell people how to get resources for their family. And if there's resources and OnlyFans, then, and this is the type of resources that you want to take advantage of, by all means, have at it. Because we can't tell people how to take care of their family. We can't tell people how to go out there and get money for their family. You just know that it may not be the route that you choose to go in your marriage. That's just like reality TV. Somebody asked me what I do reality TV. Today, I probably would, but about 10 years ago, hell no. Because I don't think my marriage would have been able to handle it or survive it 10 years ago. But today, I think that we have a pretty a solid foundation and a certain type of understanding to where we understand what it is that we're doing and we understand the goal. A lot of people get into reality TV and the people say, oh, they sell, they, they, didn't, they, didn't put, uh, they didn't put their marriage in jeopardy of this, 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 that, the other, and all these scandals and this, that, the other, and then they get on there and then they don't make it and all of this. But the thing is, everything comes with a price. Everything comes with a price. And you just have to know how far you're willing to go. Okay? So, that is my spill on the clouds. That is my spill on non-traditional marriage. And we're going to get off into this game called Full Play. Now, if you got a basket, a lot of people may have had this, this uh, game in the basket. This was really popular for Valentine's Day. But I never actually got a chance to talk about it because it was a brand new game that came out the week of Valentine's Day. This game is four games in one. All right. Real cute, 
great for a date night. Y'all always talking about turning up and see that. That's the thing about me. I've been married 22 years, but one thing that you can do, one thing if you've been following me long enough, you will know that all 22 years, I have been putting in consistent work. I got one other thing that I'm, I'm gonna talk about too. I got one other thing I'm gonna talk about when I finish talking about this game. Remind me um, to talk about time management in your marriage, time management. Okay, so foreplay comes with a set of position cards. Open. All right. Cards to tell you all kind of stuff. These are the positions that you're going to get in. So it comes with like 12 different position cards, right? 12 position cards. Then it comes with the add-ons. You can bring a vibrator to the bedroom. You can bring Kegel balls to the bedroom. Um, and this looks like a wireless vibrator. All right. This one is a paddle and a whip that you could bring. This one is whipped cream, strawberry, chocolate syrup. This is rose petals, champagne, and candles that you could bring to the bedroom. All right. Then we have your movement and activity cards, which is him stripping for you. Y'all slow dancing with each other. You stripping for him, or bitch, you getting up on the pole. Then we have our fantasy side of the cards. Blindfold, handcuffs, another type of music card, basically meaning that you can put, it looks like a, um, it looks like an iPod or something like that. So, some type of music device where you can play your playlist and then it has your dress up where you can put on like the French maid outfit, the nurse, uh, the feather duster, cowgirl hat. These are your cards. Now, this is one game. Mind you, I told you I had four. Then it comes with your sex dice. What to do to what part of the body? Then it comes with your spinner. Let me hold it like this so you can see it spin. Your spinner is going to have all different types of positions. It's going to have um, different massages, different ways to kiss, taking pictures. I'm just looking at the different stuff. But you have your sex spinner. That's the third game. And then your last game is a sex trivia booklet. Now, if you know anything about games, these sex are $10 by themselves. If you was to get another game with the card, it's probably like $14 by itself. This whole set is $19.99. This whole set is $19.99. Okay? So take advantage of it. And then it has um, just a little uh, game rules booklet to where you can play the games individually or you can combine some of them together. So it's all different types of ways. This is how you keep your marriage fun and exciting. This is the reason why I never felt like I needed to bring a third into my marriage. One, I don't do women, but two, I really feel like I can handle this. I really feel like my mind is creative enough to be able to handle Mr. Parker. I, I do believe that. So I don't have to bring in an extra body for excitement because the type of excitement that I want to have really don't require an extra body because I like to be able to do different things outside of the box, not just traditional sex. And if I want the feeling of double penetration, I know how to go get another dildo. If I want the feeling of a, a tongue licking my ass at the same time while he's hitting it from the back, I can go get a tickle him. You know, like, so th that's my philosophy on it. Okay. Time management. Let me say this. I have a lot of ladies who are stay-at-home moms because this question was asked. Stay-at-home moms, husbands get out there and work. And let me just say this here. Stay-at-home moms have the hardest job ever because I feel like stay-at-home moms, they never really get a chance to break. And a lot of times husbands don't see it your way because they feel like you at home all day and I'm having to get out here and work. So you have the time and the freedom and they don't a lot of times don't really understand what all comes along with being a stay-at-home mom but let me say this if you are a stay-at-home mom and you and your husband agree for you to be a stay-at-home mom a lot of times he agree for you to be a stay-at-home mom for your children 
okay? So if you have decided to bring in other children and keep those other children as a means of bringing in additional income, at that point, you're not a stay-at-home mom. You're not a stay-at-home mom anymore. You're a daycare. You're a business owner. Okay? So if your husband agreed for you to be a stay-at-home mom, your time, energy, and resources goes into your family. But at any point you decide to start bringing in other children and keeping them and watching them, you just turn yourself into a small business. And at that point, if your husband is complaining that, okay, your business hours and exceeded over into when I come home and these kids not going home until 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening, and by the time you get through dealing with our child all day and these people churn all day long, you tired and you, you can't give up no pussy. At that point, you have to decide if you want to shut your business down or if you want to do something better with your time management. Maybe tell these parents that there's a cutoff time. They got to come and get their kids by five o'clock so that you can have time enough to be able to get yourself together. Because let me tell you something. The, 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 the scenario that, that was posted, basically, these kids are there from like 12 hours a day. And we know that daycares a lot of times are open from six to six or seven to seven, 12 hours a day, which requires a lot of your time, right? But this is the thing. If you and your husband agree for you to be a stay-at-home mom to take care of your children or your child or whatever, that means that he agreed to provide a certain level of resources. Now, if you decide to go out there and go get some extra money for whatever reason, you got to understand that you still have to be able to be available for your spouse. And you, and the, and the excuse of you being tired is not going to be accepted because he asked you to stay at home. You went and got that extra. So my point is, if this extra that you done went and got is bringing problems into your household, you got to be wise enough to shut that shit down and let them know, look, I'm going to continue keeping your children into, the, into this month. But next month, you got to find somewhere else for them to go because it's not working out in my household. I don't have enough time for my family. But the thing is about women, and I don't fault you for this, a lot of women want to have their own money. They like the idea of being able to bring in their own money to be able to do what they want to do with the money. But you have to ask yourself what is going to be the trade-off because if you up, before he go to work and you dealing with children all day, he get off from work and you still working and dealing with children. And when the children leave, you so exhausted so you can't do anything. You can't expect to have a happy husband. And the thing is, a lot of times women get upset when I say this, but you can't get mad when he leave and go elsewhere. See, the thing is, everybody ain't into children. I'm one of them people that I'm not into children like that. I don't want to deal with children all goddamn day long. I don't. And when I come home from work, my house is supposed to be a place of peace where I can relax and unwind. But if your husband is getting off from work and you still dealing with children and he letting it be known that this ain't peace, don't res peace don't reside here. He going to leave and go somewhere else to get the peace so you can't get upset. So at the end of the day, if you got to make a hard decision to say, look, family, I can't watch your children. Look, such and such, this is this arrangement is not working. A lot of people get married, but they don't put their marriage first. And the thing is, when you get married to your husband, you made the decision to put him and his concerns and, and and the way he feel about things, you decided to put that first. Before how all these other people, you know, a lot of times we just feel like our husband's supposed to go out there and get the bag and then they're not supposed to be considered at all. And that's not true. You have to consider your spouse. And if your spouse is coming to you and, he, and you say he bitching, if your spouse is coming to you expressing his concerns about what's going on in his house, you need to listen to that. You don't need to throw it, brush it to the side. Because what I read, ma'am, when you put that up, when you sent that, that message, everything came before your family, your immediate family. 
Your mama come before your immediate family. Your 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 uh, family's children that you didn't agree to babysit come before your immediate family, and it seemed like you don't get off the clock working until seven eight o'clock at night. Because not only are you keeping them during the day for homeschool, but you doing homework in the evening time too. And you got to bathe everybody before their parents come and get them. This is a lot. And your husband is screaming for attention. And he's basically saying, at what point will you consider me? I'm going out there and getting the bag too. What, the, what is my reward? When do I get any attention? When do I get any of your time? Because the truth is, if the agreement was for you to stay home to homeschool your child, you should have talked to your husband before you went and recruited other people's children to homeschool too. Other people's children to do homework with too. Other people's children have to be bathing in the evening time too. And that's just the facts. So, in the evening time, if your husband expressed to you how he felt about it, but when he come home, he mad every day, he upset because nothing that he is saying is being heard. And that's the way he acts out. And another way he acts out is by leaving and staying gone all evening. Why? Because his home is not a place of peace. He ain't got nobody greeting him when he walked through the door saying, baby, how you doing? How was your day? Come on, um, take your shoes off. Let me fix you a, Coke, a cold glass of water. Let me fix your food and do all of this kind of stuff like that. You talking about you still doing homework at 7, 8 o'clock at night in bath and churn. So you can expect for your husband to go somewhere else and find peace. And you can expect when he's off on Mondays for him to leave in the morning and not come back until night. Because ain't nothing there for him. A ain't nothing at your house for him. What's there? All your time, attention, and resources is going into your child that you agree to that y'all agree for you to homeschool and these other people's children that you took on. So a lot of people wanted to pacify that answer and wanted to say, Oh, y'all just need a weekend getaway. And y'all just no, you don't. This man want his life to change. This man did not get married to sign up for this. He did not get married to be ignored. He did not get married to not ever be able to get no pussy because you tired. He did not agree to that. And I don't blame him because that shit that I read did not sound happy. It did not sound like nothing that I would want my marriage to be. And it just seemed like all of these other people are benefiting because they able to go to work and literally not have to parent on any level. They don't even have to bathe their children when they, when they come pick them up. You are literally doing everything. So everybody else is reaping the rewards, but the man that's paying all the bills at the house. Being a stay-at-home mom, that is a major responsibility. That is one of the hardest jobs that you could ever work. But when you take that job and then you combine it with being a daycare, an extended day daycare at that, when do you have time? The answer is you don't. When do you have time for your husband? The answer is you don't. So you can expect him to go elsewhere to get his peace. You can expect him to go elsewhere to get attention. You can expect him to go elsewhere to get everything that he needs because he ain't getting it at home. A lot of times women don't want to hear the hard truth. A lot of times women want you to amen them and agree with them even when they wrong. You having to help out with mom? That's completely understandable because at some point we all have to help out with our parents, especially when they become sickly. I have had to help out with my mom before she passed. So I understand what it means to have to be able to be of assistance, but all this extra, all this extra stuff that's going on and all these other families reaping the benefits off of your time and your husband throwing a hissy fit every time he come home, he's going to throw a hissy fit and eventually he's going to stop fucking coming there. 
eventually all of them resources that he going out there to work for, all that shit going to go somewhere else. And it should. I'm going to say the shit that other people feel like you shouldn't say. It should go somewhere. It should go to somebody who want to be a wife to him. Come get your game. Kendall Cloud, I enjoyed the interview. Mrs. Cloud, if you want to talk, the floor is yours. You all be blessed. You all enjoy your day. Come shop at the PPG store. We open up from 11 in the morning to 9 at night. The website is available as well. If you enjoyed this live, there you go. There you go to Cash App, send your tip. Enjoy y'all day.